must have read what Shakespeare said back in a distant age. All the world's a stage and the men and women in it merely play. You are the actors in this fast-moving drama. You are the factors in the world's panorama. The world's a stage and life's a play. So you must be certain at the rise of the curtain whether you'll stand in the balcony with your cigarette butts or sit in the orchestra with Dizzy and Saul Peanut. John Burks Gillespie, better known as Dizzy Gillespie, was born in South Carolina in 1917. This was where this jazz legend first became interested in music, starting with the trombone, and soon after, moving on to what he is most famous for, the trumpet. His musical talents were recognized by other Southern musicians, and Gillespie soon decided to move to New York to pursue his music career. He was a professional jazz musician by the age of 18, and earned the name Dizzy from his onstage antics and pranks. He is still remembered for his comical entertainment. After his death, Rolling Stone magazine said, You could laugh at the routines, the blowfish cheeks, and the bent trumpet bell. But the music Gillespie played came on as serious as a hurricane. Jazz, which today is a common reference in the history of American culture, was not always that way. Around 1900, the word jazz was a local swear word in New Orleans. It later became a genre of music which was heavily dominated by black musicians. The reason for this racial domination can be traced to the racial pressures of the time period. Scott DeVoe explained this point well in his book, The Birth of Beat Bop, with Without the omnipresent pressure of racial hostility, musicians of such divergent talents and temperaments might not have found themselves forced into the same narrow space. Unlike other fields of work, the music industry was more receptive and provided more opportunities for blacks. Beep bop was a new kind of jazz music, which stemmed from mainstream swing and was created by young musicians entering the jazz world in the late 1930s. Most of the credit for this new branch of jazz was given to Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. While the music they created was intended for a mainly black audience, it became a hit with the white society as well. Beep bop consisted of fast, even notes, as opposed to the drawn-out swing notes of earlier jazz. One journalist, in reference to beatbop pioneers, said, What these men were about was creating a music that white guys couldn't play. One telltale sign of beatbop was the scat singing, or nonsense syllables, put into the music. Another drastic change that Dizzy Gillespie made to jazz was taking away the swing band that would play for the dancers. Diz preferred his orchestral big band that was more for the listeners. Beat bop styling influenced many bands of the time and many groups, though some reluctant about it, did incorporate aspects of beat bop into their music. Without the creators, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, Bud Powell, Max Roach, Fats Navarro, and Tad Dameron, to name a few, music may not have evolved at the rate that it did. Up, 
From the beginning of his music career, Dizzy was performing with some of the greatest. He was a part of Cab Calloway's band, Chick Webb's band, and performed with artists such as Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, and Louis Armstrong. But bebop wasn't the only thing Gillespie added to jazz. He used Latin rhythms in his performances to create a music type that is what we now call Latin jazz. In 1946, Dizzy began working with Cuban percussionist Chano Pozo to create pieces such as Manteca, Tindio, and Cubana B. Cubana Bop. These pieces led the way for Latin jazz. Pozo was the first to bring African drums into the jazz world. Since the slavery period, drums had always been played with sticks because the whites had purposely destroyed all African drums. Gillespie and Pozo performed in the U.S. and in Europe together until Pozo was murdered at a bar in Harlem. Dizzy continued performing as he aged. He was later diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and died in 1993. Regarding Gillespie's death, fellow musician Wynton Marsalis said, We've lost one of the true giants, not just of music, but of humanity. Gillespie's music was not only well received in the US, but it became a hit in the Middle East as well. The State Department sponsored Dizzy's trip to expose the Middle East to the American culture of jazz. In Beirut, Dizzy Gillespie performed for three shows, each time filling a 1,500-seat theater. His performance showed the Middle East a side to America that they loved. There were many things that set Dizzy Gillespie apart from other musicians. Some of those things were his blowfish cheeks, his complex trumpet solos, his orchestra, his onstage dancing and playful humor, and lastly, the result of an actor sitting on his trumpet, the bent trumpet bell.